This tutorial is for the guys that are DJing already but do not know exactly the ins and outs of the, all the functions of this VDJ 2000 Nexus 2. Okay, let's get started. Hey guys, I'm back with a tutorial and this time a tutorial on the Nexus 2 of Pioneer and to be precise the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. As a DJ it's important to know your equipment and that's why I make this video because not everyone at home has a CDJ Nexus. Uh, that's why I make it when I make to do this tutorial. Uh, I borrowed one from a friend of mine so uh, I can do this tutorial for you. If you are spinning in a club or a cafe or whatever, you're probably run into the Nexus 1. There are a few differences between the Nexus 1 and the Nexus 2 and the Nexus 1 has, for example, three cue points. The Nexus 2 has four. Well, technically there are eight, but they are not very usable. The another main difference is the touchscreen on the Nexus 2. And Piney didn't make full advantage of the touchscreen. I don't know why. There's so much potential in the touchscreen and they only use it so you can type in your search query, what, which was very unhandy on the, uh, on the Nexus One. <clears throat> the touch strip they removed and the touchscreen is to replace that touch strip. Okay, let's dive into it. And here it is, the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. If you want to use a CD, I won't recommend that because you can't use any cue points um, it, uh, on the CD itself. You have to have a separate SD card or a separate um, USB stick for that. You can insert a CD and it can be a random CD. And if you have the disc selected over here, it will show the tracks on the disc. You analyze the wave of the disc uh, but as you can see it will go very slowly and that's only the first track if you select the second track it has to do that over again so it's not very quick you have to have record box for that and use the SD card if you want to do that quickly so CD, uh, C CDs are a bit out of fashion as you can see over here, it's very easy to use a USB stick and there's much more information you can put on the uh, USB stick. So I will inject uh, a CD. Let's begin at the beginning. This is the selection of which source you want to use for your DJing. Record box uh, button is for a connect direction, direct connection with your record box software. It uses a UTP connection and I I think it's called DJ Link or something. Um, the second one is the link. Um, the link function is not very useful on this player, if you have a, a USB stick over here, but it is very useful for the other player because when I use the link, and as you can see, USB, no USB, but the link, it will pull the data from the USB stick over here. But it only works if there is a UTP connection between one player and the other player. Um, the link, the USB is of course the USB, the SD is the SD card over here, and the disk I just showed you before. I will select the USB, and there are a few tracks on there. If you select the USB, I selected it before, so that's why he is playing, displaying all this. If you're putting it in, it will look something like this. And there is a selection that you can make. Uh, do you want to look for artist, album, track, key, playlist, history, matching, uh, genre. You can do this. Uh, what it's displaying over here, you can set it in record box. The thing you will probably use most is playlist. Oh. And another thing, you can set the order in which these items are displayed. Can you also set in record box? Playlists. I want to select a playlist and I have made a playlist. I have made folders in record box for the years. And in this time 
for the 10 years um, and I will select for example well techno um, I do something like that it will display the waveform that I analyzed it will display the shortcuts or hot cues as a uh, um, as Pioneer has called them over here they, those are in green and the red thingies over here are the cue points you've set what is the difference between a hot cue and a cue point well a cue point you can call them with these keys you can set them uh, you can switch between them this is the first uh, cue point and I made the second one that is uh, accidentally the same as hot cue B and but I made more cue points than hot cues the red thingies are hot cues to set a hot cue you just press memory um, when I hit play and I think well that's a good this is a good spot for hot cue it isn't but let's say it is if you have your quantize function on, just press the Q, it will jump back to the exact beat. Then I press memory and it will set a new memory point. The memory point is stored on the USB. So if you go back to Recordbox, you have to import the keys back into Recordbox. And that's why it's handy for you if you want to do it at home to use the record box connection function because if you now set a record box function uh, a cue point record box if it's um, directly connected it will do it uh, automatically for you so you have don't have to synchronize separately okay cue points but if you have a cue point um you probably want to delete it and this is a very unuseful uh, location for a cue point so I press delete it don't ask if you want to delete it it just deletes it okay this is the cue point section the input section now the hot cues well the hot cues are used so you can jump in a song if you press the cue points it has to load and it's not quick enough uh, for a live DJ set. It's only so you can cue uh, and have a starting point that it's recorded in front so you don't have to look and to search uh, the whole song for a starting point. With the cue points, the hot cue, sorry, you can make three cue points and in this case there are three cue points already assigned and I don't have the fourth one. As I mentioned before there are four or technically eight hard cues and why is because there is a function over here um, you can select a hard cue bank if you press the right button it will show up new cue points and the first bank is A, B, C and D and the second bank is E, F, G and H if I want to set a hard cue I will just press uh, if it's already queued I will just press the short key button and bank 2 is selected as you can see uh, from the light over here and I will now set your cue point E and it starts automatically playing if you want to delete it you have to go to the button for call delete if you press that, but you have to press that together with the cue point you want to delete, the hot cue, sorry. And if you press that together, first this one, and then this one, it will delete the cue point, the hot cue, sorry. I will go back to bank A. Now, if you have specified the hot cues, you can jump into between points. And in this time, I've, on the screen you can see Probably you don't can see, but Q point A is at the be, uh, at the beginning, Q point B oh, at the uh, a break part, and Q point C at the closing part. Uh, that's the outro. 
But now, if I am, for example, right in the middle of a song and I say, well, now I want to jump to the out point, I will just press the C for jumping to point C. You have to be careful because there is the quantize function. If you're carefully timing, but you press a few milliseconds after the beat has been, it will jump to the next beat and it will skip a beat in that way. So if I press it, you will see that it, it jumps in between the, uh, it waits a while for the next beat to happen just to jump. If I put the quantize function off, you will see it will jump directly. So if you want to use the quantize function, you have to do in your brain a little step that you say, I want to use, or I want to press in front of the beat that is coming. And this time it is the first beat that I want to jump into. I have to, if I'm back in a song, I have to press it before the beat happens. And as you can see, and now it's completely in the timing of the song. And let's make a loop. Therefore are these buttons, the in point, the out point, the reloop and exit button, and the four beat and eight beat loop that you can make. If you want to make a loop, uh, you press the in point, of course. And uh, therefore, if you want to do the out point, you press the out point. Well, as you can see, I didn't make a perfect loop over here. Um, well, actually I did, but not on the bars. And it will re-loop the whole thing. You can shorten the loop, it's 16 bars. You can shorten it by eight, four, two, one, a half, and a fourth. That's probably known territory. But there's one thing you have to know. And that's really important that can fuck up your DJ set. The quantize button. As you can probably hear. If you use these functions with the quantize on, it will do a perfect shortener. But there is a very, very tricky thing. If you do this with the quantize off, you will notice it will start at the beginning of the loop. You can see, if I press 4, it will do 4, but it will jump back to the beginning of the loop. And if you put the quantize on, not only will it stay really in sync with the music, but it won't back, uh, jump back into the loop. So that's one really, really nasty thing. And probably a bug in the CDJ. Okay, the next function. If you want to do a change of out point, that's uh, uh, entirely possible. If you want to do a new out point, you will press the the button again and you can make a new out point. The problem is you don't see where the music is. You can do a, a shortening in this way. For some funny or nice effects. Now it will set, if I press the button again, it will set the out point of the loop. Okay, if I want to exit the loop, I press exit. The loop will stay over here, but if I'm further in the song and I want to take back that loop, I can do the reloop button. And now it will jump back into the loop. 
and I press the reloop exit button and it will exit the loop again. Okay, when you're playing, I'll put turn it down. When you're playing and you press the four beat loop, it will always make a four beat loop if the quantizer is on. Always. As for this in point and out point, you have to set the in point and the out point manually. It will always do a four beat loop. And that's pretty nifty. Exit it. But if I want an eight beat loop, I have to press this button two seconds. And it will automatically jump to A bars. Okay, but you can also adjust the in point of a loop. And that's by pressing again, uh, making a loop, by pressing the in point and pressing the out point. And pressing the in point again if you want to adjust that. And I will turn up the volume. This is a perfect four beat loop. And now I can shorten the loop, but I can shorten it just as much. Can't do a lot about it. The quantize function, well, yeah, doesn't do really a lot. Another thing, important thing to know is that a quantize function is very handy to make these kinds of loops because um, if I have the quantize function on and I do an in point and I do a random out point, it is not a perfect loop, as you can hear. As when I do it with function on, you will hear it's a perfect loop. Then the slip function. And the slip function is over here. What does the slip function do? Well, if you do some trickery, the track will keep playing in the background, but you don't hear it. For example, when you do a cue point in slip mode, it will do the cue point, so it will play the hot, sorry, the, cue, the hot cue. It will play the hot cue, but um, as soon as it, uh, uh, if you release the button, it will jump back right in the place of the track where you are. And I will do an example. A track is playing. When I press the slip function, it starts flashing the lights. The slip function is on. And now you can see the lights are turning blue. And also the loop um, beats on, of a loop are turning blue. Now you can do a loop, but the song is playing ahead of you. It's playing in the background. I don't know if you can see it right properly. If I make a loop, a one beat loop, it will loop that section, but it jumps right back it where it uh, at where it should be. If you don't didn't do that, and the same thing with the hot cues. For example. When I press, I do the slip off, when I press the B point, that's a break, it will go into a quiet part of the song. When I press the C, it's the outro, B, C, B, C, B, C. When I do it with the slip function on, and when I press the B, it will jump back to the B, but if I release it, it will jump back into the section in C where it should be if I didn't do that. Again. And it jumps right back into the last section of the track B. If I release it, it jumps right back B. It's in the beginning. And now it's at the end. B. It's the beginning of the song. And now it jumps back right at the end. So 
the track is continuing where it should be if you didn't do that. And now the reverse function. When I play, I can reverse a track. I will reverse. Not very difficult. But there is a slip reverse also. And we just discussed the slip function. And you can reverse it with the slip function, but it continues uh, at the point where it should be if you didn't do that. And I as I leave it, it will jump right back in at the point. So the slip function ha don't has to be on for this. This way, it's just the normal reverse. This is the slip reverse. This one stays on, but if you go, you have to manually throw it back. This one, it automatically comes back. And something I forgot to mention earlier, with the slip function, there is a limited amount of time you can do that. And with the reverse function also. I can do a reverse, but if I do it long enough, it will jump back automatically and it will flash over here. You can do it only a few seconds, because otherwise it runs out of memory or something. Again. About two bars. What do we have more? Well, there is a jog adjust button. This button will adjust the speed of your jog wheel or the amount of um, back pressure it gives to you. This is very light and it will spin quite uh, a long time after you release it. But if you do this all to the right, that's the strongest one. It has far more friction and so and this is much more heavier to operate and now the all important speed function the tempo function and this is the speed slider if you slide it up it will slow down and if you slide it down it will speed up there is no feedback on the zero point and in contrast to some DJ controllers that would be very handy, but, well, yeah, it's so expensive, why do the feedback thingy? Um, the speed you can see on the display over here. Over here. And if I turn it down, it will go down. But there is a certain amount of change, and in this case, the change is only 10% in the minus or 10% in the plus. But if you do want to do, uh, say, a really, really uh, uh, steep tempo change, you can use this function, the tempo function. Do the light on here. And with this, it will toggle between uh, minus or plus 6, minus uh, uh, plus 10, and 18 or uh, 16 sorry or wide and wide is all the way 100% or 100% nothing if I tap this once it's now on 10% uh, if I tap this once it will go to 16 and it will do 16 now the tempo changes are minus or plus 16 if I do a wide I press this button and it says you wide. You, if I go all the way back to minus, it will say zero, and that's of course logic. The changes you make in this slider are very hefty in the upper ranges of this thing. I usually like to keep this one on ten percent. That's the most comfortable. Okay, there is also the famous master tempo button. Master tempo, what does it do? Well, when you play a song, 
you probably know it, but I'll explain it anyway. With master tempo off, if you do a tempo change, your pitch will go up or go down. It will go down if I slow it down, up if I s speed it up with the master tempo on. And I will go back into another section of the song where you can hear it very clearly. Off, on, this is with on. You will hear, go the tempo up or down, but not the 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 pitch of the of the song. Then there is another speed function, and that's a tempo reset. If you press the tempo reset. You can see the speed change, it's now, I will do the volume, F, uh, 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 go down the volume, um, it's at 126.8. The speed difference is only just, well, uh, almost 1%. If I go back, you will see it will do 7.5% minus. When I press tempo reset, it will reset back to no percent and back to 128 beats per minute and now you see that it's over here but your slider is still over here what happens now if you do the slider well it does do nothing because this is on when I do it off it will jump back into 117 and you can do stuff Tempo reset, this function do, does nothing. But guys and girls, there is another way to change your tempo. And that's by changing the tempo um, according to the tempo of the other player. So you can copy over the, uh, the BPM from this player to this player, just by the click of a button. How do you do this? Well, the other player has to be on master and sync has to be off on the other player if you just press well uh, uh, I just uh, play the song it's now in the break when I press the sync button it will change the tempo of the song I press sync and as you can see it will sync up the BPM of the other player it will do a tempo change so don't do it at the middle of your song if you're playing of course there is a whole discussion about using the sync button because you can do it this way um, because this way you can also automatically beat match without beat matching because the player does the beat matching for you and that uh, I get why there is a discussion uh, because well then you're not really DJing and I think in that aspect they're true uh, it's true but on the other hand the key is there so if you need it use it my personal opinion I don't use it because I like to have some control over what I'm doing but sometimes I don't have the time uh, or I have to uh, uh, do a decision very quickly or um, I can't beat match in time for example that r happens not a lot but sometimes it happens and then I use in an emergency I use the sync button but I don't try to use it one important thing the master has to be off because this is the master and then you can sync up here what the master is or isn't that it's determined by your mixer um, by the buttons over here and as you saw this player was finished playing do for the master uh, volume down this player was playing stop because it was at the end of the song and now it switched over to master 
I didn't do that. It did it, it do, did that automatically. Um, tempo matching is also is only done if the DJ link and that's the UTP connection between uh, this guy, this guy, and this guy is correctly done. The sync button works if only two players are connected but the automatic uh, master switch uh, is done by your mixer if this one is playing the mixer fights out with the players who is the master or who isn't for example this one is playing right now but when i switch off the sync and I turn down the other player up here and I do a fader down this one is off and now this one is on what player is playing and that's a setting you can do uh, and it only works if the DJ if the connection the DJ link connection is active you can look at the ring of the player which one is playing now I know from just from looking at the color this one is playing this one is not if I do a fader up this one is also playing the ring turns red this one turns red too but there is a big but if the setting is not correctly this one has to be player 2 on slider 2 and this one has to be player one on on slider one if you connect and that's what i did <laughs> a few months ago if you connect player one to slide two and player three uh, and player two to slider three it won't work it thinks that it is the second player because it's slider two so it will turn up and that can be confusing it will turn up the red ring from the first player but it isn't the first player, it's the, uh, um, it, it's the second player. I confused myself <laughs> over here. You can use these sliders if this is this player thinks it's player 2 and uh, uh, this player uh, thinks it's player 3. Then it will work in this way. But again, you can see this over here. This is player 2 and this is player 1. Okay, then there are the speed adjust vinyl thingies. What does this do? Well, if I have a song and that's playing, turn the volume up and I do a vinyl break. That's this one. I turn it all the way over here and I press the pause button. It will slow down. And this is the speed in which it slows down. If you're playing, and I press the button again, it's very short. Turn the way up. But you can also do that with speeding up, and therefore is the other button. If I press play, it will slowly spin up. And if I press it again, it will slowly spin down. Now if I put this back and it will slowly spin up. Because this is turned down, it will immediately stop. But there is a th tricky thing here. Because when it's playing, and I release this one, it will do that, the speed up thingy. But, so if I set a cue point, standing still now I press play it won't do that you have to have the the pause button uh, it has to be paused not cued 
it has to be paused for it to work. Okay, let's continue our buttons quest. There is a button for the jog mode and that controls how the behavior of the jog wheel is. When I switch to a cue point, a point in the song, and I do the volume open, there are two modes, the vinyl mode and the CDJ mode. The vinyl mode is the mode that you will think it will react. And that's, when you do this, it will scratch. Very logic, because that's the way a, a vinyl player will react. But there is a CDJ mode. And with the CDJ mode, when you do this, it won't react to that. It, um, when you do this, it will have the same function as the outer ring. When you pause a song, a really thing, annoying thing will happen. It will repeat the last position. Where can you use that for? Well, you can use that for adjusting a cue point, for example. You can now... You can look up where the beat is in. Now I know this is the starting point of the beat. Um, but most of the time I don't like to use it very much. Uh, uh, I just use the vinyl mode um, and I like to scratch from time to time. Woohoo! We're almost there, but we're not there yet. There is another function and that function is the time mode. I will press play. What does the time mode do? Well, and the auto cue. The time mode is this button. Um, it will change the mode that your. Uh, oh, I was met with my hand on the jog wheel. It will display the time that is elapsed or remaining of a song. Uh, well, pretty almost. Uh, 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 every CD, CD player will have this function, but there is an auto cue function, and that auto cue function um, is displayed over here. This is, by the way, the auto cue if it's loaded automatically. This will load in your auto cues. That's the function where I talked about earlier. That's the function that will do if um, uh, if if you don't auto lo load the hot cues, it will you have to use the call function. Uh, press this and press all the all the buttons that you want to use in the future. Um, that's this function. But there is an auto cue, and that is when you select a, a, a song for the first time, uh, for example, this, it will don't start to play, it will automatically cue on the first cue point of the song. You can switch that off, I don't really use that a lot. Yeah, and then the functions on top of the screen. The first one is the browse button. Very useful because here you can browse through your uh, through your library or uh, browse for an artist or album. Uh, favorites, for example. Um, and if you press this, it will load up the uh, the screen. If you press it again, it will go back into the mode of your uh, what song is playing. When you do it for uh, two seconds, you continue pressing the button. It will load up the the screen, and that's where it dif uh, there's the difference between the Nexus and the Nexus Two. Here you can use the the uh, uh, the touch screen. For example, if I want a song, uh, Dex, um, 
this one. <laughs> Don't even can pronounce it. If you're uh, searching for this song, I can type out the the keys on the display. This is for going back. This is for using the space. Um, it has no touch script at the bottom as the CDJ Next has. Uh, you can type just on the on the screen uh, really fast I can say uh, but there are no special characters um, uh, besides this one um, and it's not very useful if you have a song that is uh, called uh, well um, no mercy for example and if you search on no uh, that has entirely no use because everything with uh, the N and the O will turn up from Anouk to uh, Will uh, Gregor Salto or no there are no N and O in but a groove phenomenon, phenomenon before, uh, for example so that's the search function next is the tag list well you can make tags and therefore that you can do with the tag um, uh, remove from a uh, track if you have a playlist, for example, and I can tag this song if I want to. Oh no, that's the tag list. I can tag this song so I can use it later. There is a little uh, V mark at the side of the song. Now it's on, on the tag list, now it's not. If I press it, then the V is there and I can see it over here on the tag list. There is a really, I don't know if they fixed it, but sometimes it is written to the USB drive and some and Recordbox can read it uh, and sometimes it's not. I don't know what it is. But you can select songs throughout your DJ set or you're in the playlist, for example, and you say, well, uh, I want to do this song a little bit later. Let's uh, tag this, let's tag this, and let's tag this. Let's call the tag list and all the, the songs are over here. Okay, then there's the info button. Well, the info button um, is for, in this case, not very useful, all the information of a song turns up, but it can be very useful in, and this is the wrong section because I don't have many tags over here, the down section. Um, I, choose, uh, I chose for the, uh, for the BPM next to the, to the other uh, uh, thingies, but um, sometimes it's useful to have some more information. For example, the key. And um, the key, the matching key is displayed with the green thingy over here, and that's a matching key from the other player. Um, but sometimes it's useful to see that. Now I can, if I do the info on the on the um, uh, uh, playlist. The info and it will show the numbers of the song uh, and you can go through the same playlist but you see the keys okay link info well I can see by pressing for two seconds the link info on um, uh, on a song yeah I don't know where you use it for but uh, now you can see um, player two is lit of um, is linked to to this one and it's through uh, to player one and now it's from the USB drive yeah I, not very useful but it is there okay the menu function well the menu function is different on um, different places so there's not a real uh, a unified thing that you can say about the menu this displays if you do this on a song, uh, this displays the last song you have loaded into this player, not the other one, this player. Um, but if you do that on, for example, a list, 
uh, you can delete or or it's it's really the menu of of uh, uh, of that that particular item that is selected. Uh, when you do this on the dr flash drive, you can load or save your settings that you set in your record box. The waveform color, for example. There's also, this is the utility, and these are the real settings, the real menu. Um, the settings that you can set in record box also, but uh, it can set... Um, the play mode from single to continuous uh, that it keeps on playing and not stopping after every song uh, eject etc uh, etc et these are settings that you can also set in record box okay uh, back a really uh, a good function to go uh, back and you saw me already use it when uh, to go in you press the uh, um, the rotate button um, you rotate the rotate button for going to, for example, the playlist, and that's uh, and this is how what my remark about the touchscreen pioneer didn't do much with the touchscreen. You can't do anything or swipe or, or do anything. Uh, you can do something with the position of uh, of the song, uh, but you can't jump or or. Yeah, you can jump, but not in the middle of the song, not in tempo of the song, I mean. You can jump if you press this one and you press play again, uh, then it starts playing over here. Um, but that's only the only thing the touchscreen does. There can be so much more done with the touchscreen. You have to use the scroll button for that, and if you want to go back, you use the back button. The tag and remove, we already uh, discussed that with uh, a tag list. Um, the track filter and edit, well, that is a very useful function. Because when I go to a playlist, for example, well, I don't have, an, oh, I don't <laughs> have uh, any dubstep at all. Uh, hardcore, not very much. Uh, house. Um, I can do a track filter on the things that are in this list. So I can filter out certain songs. For example, the songs within a certain tempo range. Or songs that are... Now, well, let's show it. If I uh, uh, engage this button, it will show a funnel over here. And what are the terms of this funnel or this filter? Well, if you press it for two seconds, you can set the settings for this filter. You can set, for example, and that's where the touchscreen is used. For example, the BPM range, uh, 130 BPM plus or minus six, uh, the key, and that's, uh, well, um, yeah, you can't set the key, you can't set the um, the Camelot notation, uh, so you have to have a sheet with a uh, with a translation, but you can set the um, the related key. You can also set the rating, which I use for the energy level and the color uh, that it has to supply with. But the most useful is the BPM and the matching key of the other player and this is again where the master function comes in um, this these are the uh, things that are copied from the master player and in this case this is the master player okay these are the functions let's go back and now you see only one track fits into the um, the things that I wanted to do um, for example, this is in key, but it's not very in the tempo range. If I switch this off, you can see it will turn up uh, more songs. And there's one function at the end to conclude this video about the functions. Um, it's the shortcut function. I don't know exactly if it's on a CDJ Nexus, but on the 2 it is, the Nexus 2, 
and that's the shortcut function uh, the shortcut functions are shortcuts to functions that you can manage or reach other uh, ways for example uh, you can do some settings from the settings menu load or save settings uh, the um, the color of your waveform uh, you can make it blue or rgb um, but also a uh, track and you can uh, do that by uh, tapping the screen shortcut uh, playlist and it will show all your playlists shortcut search and yeah I don't know why the search is here because you can also reach it by pressing two uh, seconds over here uh, and the matching um, I did not a video about the matching uh, or the the super functions of record box check that video out that uh, goes into the matching function of the CDJs Okay, that concludes the functions at the front of the player, but there is also a back of the player. Why is that important? Well, maybe if you know how it's connected, then you can connect yourself or fix some problems that are with the CDJ. At the back we have uh, a couple of connections, and the first one is the USB connection. This one you can use uh, to hook up with your computer. For example, use your CDJ as a MIDI controller for your DAW. Well, not very useful, but you can use it for that. Uh, but um, there's also a function for controlling the players with it from, I think, Serato or something. The link that we talked about a few times, the link that is used, it's a RG45 connector, which I can't get loose. Um, uh, it's a, just a network connection. Um, you have to have a USB hub to use it. Uh, no USB hub, a UTP hub. Then we have uh, the uh, audio connections. This is for the um, the analog connections, the right, the left. Um, but I don't use that. I use the digital one because then you don't have so much quality loss uh, on the way to your mixer. Uh, that's the power connection, and of course this is the power button. Now I have a question for you. Dan released in the beginning of this year the 5000 players with almost the same capabilities or even more capabilities than the Nexus 2. But um, from just the looks of it, it looks a bit cheap and fragile. But is it? I didn't experience it. What's your experience with the 5000 player of Danon? Please share it with me in the comments below and the other users of YouTube. It was a little bit lengthy, but I hope it was very useful to you. Um, this concludes this vlog. I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching and until next time. Bye.